I did go and made a video to take inventory of all the things that they stole. You guys are aware that they stole my pressurized car washing machine. Guess where I am? I'm on the land, right? The land that I was in court for two years on, right? So why have I waited so long to come on this land? We're gonna dive into it. This is episode two of my court case and me reclaiming the land that they tried to take away from me. I just didn't allow it and I had to fight for it. In today's episode, we're just gonna take inventory and account for the other things that were missing on this land while I was in court since 2022, right? So it's a bit loud because of the cars are passing. I'm actually on the main road. A couple of things that happen here is, first of all, people started parking cars, right? It's even better because we call them when we, when we had the judgment, we call them that they have to move because I'm coming back. So people started parking cars on my land and using as a garage to sell their cars. And of course, I had to find out if it was the plaintiff because I was the one taken to court. I didn't take the person to court. He took me to court. When I, he was trying to stop me from working and I was able to find him, he took me to court. So I was trying to find out, I was the defendant, he was the plaintiff. I was trying to find out if it was him who was trying to be funny, because people can be funny in Ghana. Now I realized it's just somebody who just saw the opportunity that is a beautiful place. I set it up nicely and nothing is happening and they chose to use that opportunity to what? To put the cars on there. Now. The place is very bushy, right? Because the place has been abandoned for two good years and it's starting to grow. Like it's starting to grow grasses here and there. Um, since I did this slab, right? I came on, I screeded over this and nothing is happening. Nothing is happening and it's, it's getting weird here. You know, um, this right here is my borehole and the borehole, the piping inside, you see this? They stole all the wiring work that I did on the borehole, they stole it. So they've stolen a lot of things from me while I was in court, right? They've stolen a lot of things from me. They've stolen the, one of the pressurized car washing machine, right? I had two of those. I kept one with the previous owner that I bought it from because he's an engineer. He can work with those stuff. He's kind of good with like, with stuff like, he's, he's, he's a handyman. He's very good with like electronics and stuff like that. So he can build it from scratch. So I just recently spent 10,000 Ghana CDs, which is roughly about $1,000 to build a new one. It's more expensive if I buy the brand new one, but the person I bought a car watch from, I'm actually still working with the person, is, you know, putting one together for me. So I have to spend 10,000 Ghana CDs to buy the new one that I, you know, they stole from me. They stole my car washing machine around 5 a.m. in the morning. They took my wheelbarrow to steal it and they used Trotro, right? Trotro is kind of like, like a bus that they use for, you know, public transportation, but it's owned privately. They used that to steal my thing, 5 a.m. in the morning. And I caught on the CCTV, as you could see in attached, right? So all of these, right? While I'm gone, they've been doing a lot of things here. They've been smoking, doing a lot of things here. They've been using my water for free, but since nobody's living here, Ghana Water hasn't showed up yet to build them. But the moment I show up, I have to pay all these bills. And it's gonna be very expensive for all these years. People are here taking shower, you know, do whatever they want. And there is absolutely nothing I can do about it. So all these pipings, right? I have pipe works going throughout. They've stolen all of it. They've stolen a lot of things from me. Can you believe that they gave them no damages? And this thing is busted open here. So we're gonna dive into it. People have been coming here, it's two rooms. One was for the workers, one was for management and where we take money. You see the paint, everything is deteriorating, right? They stole uh, a chair in there, the office chair that I had in there, they stole it. And I had to come and remove some of these things from here because they were stealing, they stole all the wiring work, right? So this was wiring work, it's a whole bunch of wiring work. They stole all of it, they stole all of it. Right? And then I have guys staying in here. Right? Right? So when you come back here, right? When you come back here, 
right? I blocked off the front for good business. So the back here is really messy. I demolished this building. This is when they started causing issues. When I first came here and demolished this building, that is when I started encountering all the issues with the guy bringing the police and all that stuff. That's where it started from. I was demolishing this very building that we are standing on. And then I used the same blocks to put a wall in the back because there was no wall in the back to mark my boundaries. I put a wall in the back and all this time I was fighting this guy with the police and all that, but he, he backed off. And it's only after I finished the car wash that he came thinking that if he stops me, I will do what? Come and see him, but I didn't. So this is the office. They stole the fan. I believe they stole the fan or we removed it. I forgot, but I think they stole it. I don't know. Because uh, my guy was telling me that we should remove it, but I think they stole it. And then we had a camera in here, but we had to remove it because they were stealing things already. I need to check out the media if they stole it. We had a, people have been sleeping here. People have been, you know, squatting here, you know, squatters coming here, doing whatever they want here. Uh, there was a chair here that was going to be the office. So the place is smelly. It's terrible. Unfortunately, they've stolen all the things from me, right? And that's not even everything, right? They stole the fan, right? I had a fan inside there. They stole everything that you can possibly move, right? Disregarding all the labor fees that I paid, right? If you need an electrician to come in and do this, you got to pay for labor fees aside from the materials that I bought. And these guys cut it up and they're going to sell it for scraps, right? They don't care about the money that you spent. So before I went to court, yes, I was not awarded any damages, unfortunately. But before I went to court, I did a lot of work, right? When I was doing the renovation, the car wash, I put a lot of money in by buying all these wiring work. It was most electricals and painting works. The place looks terrible. I have to paint the place again, right? It's smelly. We have to disinfect it. We have to do some deep cleaning. We have to do a lot of work, right? And I have to buy all these materials that I bought before this guy wasted my time in court for the past two years. And I have to buy it again and pay for labor fees again. I'm doing it. I'm doing the job twice, right? It's a pain that comes with this. But the beautiful thing is I got my hands on the judgment now. So they are on a legal vacation. Yes, what do I mean by that? The course in Ghana usually go on a break from July 31st to like, you know, early October, they come back, right? So it was quite difficult to get my hands on my judgment, but I got it, I read through it. And basically that guy has no business coming on the land, right? As I mentioned the last time. So the following episode, we're gonna dive into me cleaning the car wash, you know, cleaning it up, getting things back in place. What's my plan for this? My plan is to, right, they stole a lot of things from me. If you stole the office chair that I had there. So my plan is to, of course, get all the things back, buy some things twice. I was smart though. I took my camera home. You know, that's how I was able to capture this. Uh, the day that they came to steal the car washing machine, I realized that they can possibly think, oh, there was a camera, right? I think it was an inside job. So they might think, like, oh, there's a camera, they're gonna catch us, let's go and steal it. And they did come back, but I bid them to it. So I went for the cameras and the, the, the TV and all that, and I was able to you know, get the footage that you guys see on the screen. Once I got the footage, I kept everything in the house. So I still have the TV for my camera, I still have the cameras, because they didn't steal the cameras, I got to them before they did. And I took away a lot of things as well, right? So they got me on the electrical wiring. They got me on a few things, but I was able to save myself from a lot. So I'm going to take what I have and buy what they stole and then add it together. If I didn't take home anything, then I would be in a very dire situation. So I'm going to go in and install my cameras yet again. Not yet though, after I have the place secure. I'm going to go in and, you know, put my dustbins. Because I have two dustbins for people, you know, when you're washing cars, the cars are dirty. You got to take out the trash and put it somewhere. So we have dust beans. I, I moved it because they were going to go steal it, right? It's very movable. They were stealing everything movable. I'm going to go and hook up the boho, right? The boho has this um, electronic device that they, they store the wiring work that I run all the way from the boho to that. That pumps out the water. But I did ha I have that. I have that thing. It was quite expensive. So now I don't have to buy that again. I just have to buy the wire and they will hook it up. I have the chairs, right? The chairs for the customers to sit on. I moved that to the house, so I've saved on that. I have a few holes for the uh, pressurized washing machine. I already spent 10,000 Ghana CDs on the pressurized car washing machine. So now I got my two pressurized washing machine and I'm gonna get the ball rolling and start working. In the long run though, you guys are aware of this beautiful minimal that I'm trying to build on this property. But I just wanna take control of my land again. I wanna wash cars. I wanna start small as I always do the lease startup. 
And then we're going to build this mini mall. We're going to put up that beautiful gym. We're not going to let this evil, this two years of delay, crush our dreams. I'm back again. I'm back like I forgot that I was even in court for two years. I got the energy back. And it's just a, it just makes the story beautiful, right? You got to take the pain and you got to make the best out of it. This guy educated me tremendously on land. And now I'm in the land business. So that's my damages that I got from this guy. It's my PhD in land. You can't be out here complaining all the time. I'm completely fine. Believe it or not, I have no problem with this guy at all. As a matter of fact, if I can thank him, I will, right? Because he made me tough in Ghana. He showed me the ropes. He showed me how the game is played in Ghana. And now that I'm back, I'm in control. And we know we're going to get this car wash, you know, going. How much do I expect to make from this car wash? How much did I spend on this car wash? Let's dive into it. I spent a lot of money on coffees and wasting my time and fighting you no know, police and all that. I'm not going to dive into that. But I bought a car wash for $83,000 cash after registration and all that. And I did some renovation works. When it's all said and done, I was in like $111,000. Precisely, I remember, before they put a stop to this. Well, I was going to get my money back in three years or less, right? So the car wash, before the cities, before the Ghana cities depreciated tremendously, when I was doing this, the car wash, you know, was printing money and I was going to make about $3,000 every month because the CDs to dollar ratio was $1 equals 5.8 Ghana CDs at the time. Yes, 2021, December, around there, that's what, that was the price. When I did the math, that's what it was on my projections. But now, because the CDs is so terrible, but the prices of car washes went up. Well, at the time when I went to court, I think if you watch a car was like 10, it's doubled, but it's still going to be less, right? Because now once dollar is like 16 CDs, right? So when I do the math, I can safely say that the car wash is going to print about $1,700 to $2,200 a month. And we can take that, right? Uh, about four years, you get your money back because of the currency depreciation. But we're not only going to do the car wash, right? This land is actually for the minimum where we're going to print a lot of money and we're going to dive into that because I'm actually considering raising money for this and this business is going to print a lot of money this is not a small business it's not my little you know thrifty business this is an actual business that's going to cost money right it's going to cost money to build it out and it's going to print money i have the financials the gym is going to print money the rooftop lounge is going to print money the restaurant is going to print money and we might even put a forest in there to print money we're going to sell sportswear we're going to sell you know protein shake and all that and it's all going to print money we're going to have a laundry mat it's going to print what money so you know i'm excited for this big project and i do want to share you know the success and the story and everything with you guys so i don't want to do this alone i don't want to be greedy and take like three or four years and build this out alone it's just me right you guys been with me you guys been supporting me and all that so i do want to share this project with the public I want to raise money to do this project, right? When the time gets there, we will talk. But for now, the focus is to get a car wash back up and running. And then we're going to start our foundation. We're going to hold around. We're going to start our foundation. Then we're going to talk, right? But I'm excited, right? Ghana is full of obstacles. It's not just Ghana. Life in general is full of obstacles. But unfortunately, Ghana, the obstacles that you face is this, you know, constant, you know, agony and stress that you go through trying to build a property. That's when people show up and they try to just drag you back, right? Like it's like digging a hole inside. The next day you go, you know, you're digging a hole. You try to go down like, let's say, like, you know, 80 feet or something. And you dug like, you know, 10 feet today. And you come out tomorrow and somebody has covered it. And you're back to zero again. That's Ghana for you when you're trying to build something, right? They're dragging you back. And that's the situation I found myself in. But now we are fully in control of the car wash. 30 days is up. That means the pill time is what? Over and we are back on the land. That means there is nothing this guy can do. I'm back on my land. I'm about to work. I'm about to print, you know, do this boring business. You know, I've learned so much and we've acquired more land. Can you believe I was stubborn enough to acquire more land on the same road about eight to 10, you know, kilometers down to do another car wash and more things, right? That is what Ghana requires. You have to be resilient. You have to push through the pain. You don't have to let all these distractions bog you down you have to keep going you have to you know push through the terror barrier right so life is amazing right when life gives you lemon they say you make lemonade with it that is exactly what i did with this ordeal i turn it around i use it to benefit myself and that's what life is about don't be crying and not looking for solutions people say oh i'm done with ghana because i had this court i had this land issue so i'm done with ghana and you run away and it's okay 
But I don't think it's impossible because there are people here with houses, with hotels, and all that. You think they took it easy? It wasn't easy, man. Ghana, the land and real estate space is not easy, man. You got to have the heart for it. People will test you. People will try you. You just got to fight for what's yours. And at the end of the day, the law does work, right? The law does work. As I beautifully demonstrated to you guys, I've been saying it since day one because I knew it was so black and white. If I would have lost the case and this guy had the land, that means there was no law and order in Ghana. I was pretty clear on that. And what happened? I won the case as I should. So there's absolute law and order. So stick to your guns just like you will in the States. People go to court all the time in the States. People go through stuff all the time in the States. UK, wherever you are. Ghana is no different, except that the problems is a bit different. So you just got to understand the game. You got to understand how things are done here and you move accordingly. What do I mean by that? I think I would have done myself a lot of good if I would have actually went to see this guy, though it was very annoying. Now I'm a big Ghanaian, so I know how to play the politics. I think I should have went to see the guy, but then I wouldn't have learned all these lessons, though. So I'm happy I went through the pain, but if I would have seen the guy, you know, the Ghana way, I could have negotiated a deal where I ended up wasting like 50,000 Ghana cities on this guy. As annoying as it is, Ghana, sometimes you just have to know how to play politics, right? It would have done me a lot of good. But I was stubborn, Americanized, and I went through this. Yes, I learned a lesson, and I sticked it to him. He had to spend money, right? Yes, this guy is a litigant. He's always in court fighting people. That's what he does for a living. So, of course, he has his lawyer on, on a retainer. So, I'm sure he didn't spend a lot of money on lawyer fees. However, however, this guy had to pay for his composite plan. The land that he was claiming is his was bigger, so he had to spend more on that. He had to spend on filing and all that. So, he ended up spending like about at least 10,000 Ghana CDs, you know, uh, considering that he's not paying the lawyer. Like, everything is flat, right? So, he's still wasting money just to fight me for something that's not his. So, I think just that alone, I stuck it to him. I made him swear for his money and he didn't get a dime, right? But at the same time, if I wanted my peace of mind, if I wanted to move fast on this project, considering all the money that I lost, I thought I was going to get that money back. I've lost like sixty-five to $80,000 in potential revenue that I've made, I would have made in these two years. Would it have been worth it to pay this guy the 50000 Ghana cities, which was going to be about $4,000 and some change at a time? in exchange to make my $60,000 cash because I didn't get any damages. As annoying as it is, sometimes you got to think about it from this angle as a businessman, as somebody who understands the politics and how effed up Ghana is sometimes and how things work sometimes. What do you think I should have done? Did I do the right thing by fighting this guy and get my land back and sticking it to him? Or you think... I should have played the Ghana politics. This is something I've been battling with. So let me know in the comment below, what should I have done? Did I do the right thing by sticking it to this guy and winning at the end and him not getting a dime and actually losing money? Or I should have played the Ghana politics and went to see him and give him free money that he does not deserve just to have my peace of mind and get an easy route. What should I have done? Let me know. Mm -hmm.